The White House says, uh, go. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. You know, the professional lawyers that are now representing uh, Donald Trump, both uh, inside counsel and, well, then there's Rudy Giuliani, uh, have uh, constructed a letter to Congress to suggest that they are behaving in an unconstitutional fashion and that there'll be no cooperation with any impeachment inquiry, evidence collection, or witness testimony, or anything along that line from inside the administration, which is uh, yet another bold move by the White House, which probably won't bear well for them. Uh, Michael Kennedy, our esteemed professor and often guest from Brown University, is here to talk about it. But first, I just wanted to mention uh, this headline, in case anybody's scoring at home, Missiles are firing and an incursion is ongoing uh, from Turkey into northern Syria uh, in lockstep with the move of U.S. troops, albeit 50 in that portion of northern Syria, that were exited states left by the president's decision earlier this week. Uh, this, is a, this is a kind of a weird inverted wag the dog that the president has kind of done to the Middle East, to us, and inevitably, I think, to himself. And the idea that he was changing the conversation. Now, look, he's been all about withdrawing U.S. troops from time to time. And as you may have seen last night, uh, former uh, Adjutant General Reginald Centracchio was talking about how this might have been the right move, but it certainly is the wrong time. And he couldn't define the timeline. Well, the timeline isn't three days, three weeks, three months, or maybe even three years. It could be three decades before Kurdistan is actually developed. And Turkey and the Kurds figure out a way to live in peaceful coexistence. To create this vacuum and, and, and to put uh, the Kurds in this kind of insecure situation and to literally have 10,000 ISIS members jailed potentially running free when the Kurds run free or run out for in, in defense or withdrawal is nuts. And so every Republican who has something to say about this says so. And I wonder if that is inevitably going to be Donald Trump's real problem here. Uh, more than Donald Trump, because we are just kind of conditioned to make it about him from any direction, we got a security problem right now in a big way. Uh, welcome aboard. I just couldn't start the show w without that. Uh, in the meantime, these headlines dominate the conversation, right? The White House vows to block. There are other headlines that talk about it. They declare war. Think about this. White House declares war on impeachment. Can, can, can you say, say that to yourself slowly? Here's the latest in the network, then we'll join Michael. Mr. President, are you interviewing lawyers? To represent you. The White House now says its refusal to cooperate is rooted in the law. In an eight-page memo, the president's lawyer writes that the House impeachment probe has denied the president the right to cross-examine witnesses, to call witnesses, to have access to evidence, and many other basic rights. You have a basically an investigation right now, which we're not allowed to, to provide, see evidence that they're bringing forward. We're not allowed to cross-examine. Democrats say the memo simply invents excuses to stonewall. This is really unprecedented. Congress has a responsibility to conduct oversight. It's a particularly serious responsibility in the context of an impeachment inquiry. Democrats are gathering evidence around the president's now infamous July phone call with the Ukrainian president. An early memo from the whistleblower cited a White House official who was on the call and described it as crazy and frightening. The American people have the right to know if the president is acting in their interests. The House issued another subpoena Tuesday after the administration blocked Gordon Sondland, a key witness, from sitting for a deposition at the last minute. The president said he couldn't allow Sondland to go before a totally compromised kangaroo court. This entire thing is a political charade. A group of Republicans defended Mr. Trump, 
even as they urge the White House to loop them in next time. Ambassador Sondland says he's disappointed that he wasn't allowed to attend this deposition today. Yeah, and I said the same thing. We're, 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 uh, we wish he would have been able to testify too, but we fully understand why the administration made the decision they did. They really wish that he was able to testify, but they understand. These guys are on the fly right now, making it up as they go along, it seems to me. Welcome, Professor. Good to see you. Michael is a professor of sociology and international affairs at Brown University. Um, I don't know. We've had a dozen conversations about this presidency. Uh, give me a short snippet as to where you think we are right now, then we'll talk about some of these important developments. The first time I was on your show talking about this, March 2017, I said, I anticipate Trump being impeached. He said, no, 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 it won't happen. I feel like it's Check March 2017. Check the Wait a second. Go, go on Twitter. Go on Twitter and you'll see. I just retweeted. <laughs> so, but honestly, where we are right now, we are in the greatest crisis I could imagine. Why? Because we have a foreign policy crisis of unimaginable portions, so much so that Republicans, even Trump's greatest acolyte, are coming out and saying that Trump has screwed up in withdrawing from Syria. That's on the one hand. And on the other hand, of course, we have this impeachment upcoming and Trump at all stall, um, stonewalling this whole inquiry. But they have two roots. And that is everything depends on whether we see responsible Republicans stepping up to keep America from falling into an even deeper crisis than what it's in right now and keeping the world a little bit safer than what Trump has just made happen with Erdogan's and Putin's support. This is a Turkish and Russian alliance to create a new kind of Syria at the expense of Kurds who were America's allies and the expense of the world when, as you were right, this incursion will release all sorts of ISIS uh, prisoners. Well, the president is trusting Turkey to secure those prisoners. Mm. Their top responsibility, their top security perception threat, it's not ISIS. It is the Kurds. That's who they're going after. Any legitimacy to, to Turkey's concern about the Kurds? There is a complicated relationship between the Kurds of Turkey and, the, and, and Turkey's own Kurdish uh, citizenry. But I think the important thing to think about is that instead of aggravating crisis, as you said in the beginning of the show, Turks and Kurds need to figure out a better way to live together, right? And that is by deepening democracy within Turkey and assuring the stability of the Kurdish part of Iraq. That's not an easy ask. And it certainly is, doesn't feel like it's going to, I, I don't think we're at a closer chance for that to happen now that this has happened. Oh, no. I mean, this has made things far worse. Yes. And we were already in a declining spiral as Erdogan is assaulting, you know, the foundations of Turkey, Turkish democracy itself. And by the way, he's now coming over. Oh, yeah. He's coming over for a visit. He must have done Trump a favor. How is that going to go? How are the Republicans going to feel about that? Um, I, we'll, we'll get back to, to how the Republicans are dealing with the, the, the Turkey situation and when and if, if that is going to be the eventual relationship demise. In fact, why don't we break here? We'll come back and, and we'll talk more about the White House war on Congress right now. Can you believe headlines like that? Stay with us. This is one of the few impeachment inquiries in the history of our country. It goes to the core of whether the president abused his office to seek political help in his re-election campaign and did so to the detriment of our nation's security. The president's doing his job. President, when, when you're talking about the hard-earned tax dollars of the American people going to a foreign government, the president's going to make sure that there is no corruption there. He's doing his job, his duty as the commander in chief, his duty as the president of the United States. So I don't have a concern about that. I mean, that is laugh out loud embarrassing. <clears throat> Jim, I don't know how Jim Jordan's Ohio constituents can actually look at that and think that the guy isn't 
almost a paid shill at this point to suggest that Donald Trump would put corruption uh, in, a, in, a, in a foreign environment uh, as his top concern while holding back uh, over already congressional past resources for military aid to that country is beyond the pale of, of, of belief. What, what concern does he have with Russian corruption? What concern does he have with North Korean corruption? What concern does he have with Saudi Arabian corruption? Is, are they kidding me? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know how you, I don't know how he spits that out without washing his own mouth out with soap. So Jim Jordan used to be pretty consistent. He's not at all consistent anymore, but he's not alone. I mean, this is what is remarkable about what has happened to the GOP having become the POT, you know, the party of Trump. It is, you know, I always thought Republicans stood for national security, free trade, constitutionality, and instead what they're standing for is loyalty to the great leader. And you know, I was, loyalty is fear-based, though. Well, here's something that I find really compelling. Right, you're the sociologist, so, don't you know? You, you understand so, that. So, you know, we have the former Republican National Committee chair, Michael Steele, at the Watson Institute at Brown, you know, and he's visiting with us from time to time. And the other day, he twi tweeted something, uh, an article, an uh, op-ed in the New York Times that said, the reason why Republicans are acting like this, where they're abandoning their principled stance in order to be good lapdogs for the president, is because they are increasingly caught. They are not defending Trump so, more, so much as they are defending increasingly their own past defenses of Trump. And so, to my mind, say it slowly. They're, they are not defending Trump as much as they are defending their past defenses of Trump. They are themselves. So they're doubling down on. They're on, doubling down on their on their defenses. Of course, there are reasons why they do that because they're afraid of Trump attacking them. They're they're afraid of getting primaried, right? You know, so that's understandable. Basic core political. That's rational. Worry. That's a rational political act. But what is not rational is that Trump is digging holes deeper and deeper and deeper for them to go in, in order to continue to defend the indefensible. And that is what Jim Jordan has done here. But the reason why this is so dangerous is that this is unsustainable, especially when you have a crisis like that which you began the show. The Turkish crisis, the Turkish-Syrian crisis, is perhaps going to push over the Republican establishment because you, you see more rea Ah, so here's a question. Why should we be more outraged by what's happening in Turkey and Syria? and less outraged by what's happening in Ukraine with uh, Trump. Oh, it's because Trump is actually seeing this. This is actually more dangerous for Trump to pursue the Ukrainian question because this is attacking the whole uh, integrity of his relationship as, a, uh, as our commander in chief. He is not acting on behalf of the United States. He's beha acting on behalf of the United States of Trump. Okay. And that's what Jim Jordan should be concerned for. That's what a GOP that stood for national security once in, upon a time should stand for. Well, and this is why hmm. Mitt Romney is maybe you know, showing the tip of the iceberg. But I don't know. If you were called a, what did Trump call Mitt Romney? Some vulgar term? You know, maybe, there, maybe not, Jim he, Jordan is afraid of being called a pop. So, in, but there in was Utah, a, it's, it's, it's not a very vulnerable there's place. There's a reason why John F. Kennedy wrote Profiles in Courage. This is something that I think should be required reading for every Republican today, because we should be putting country ahead of party. And in fact, we see that right now. We see that with uh, the head of the Intelligence Committee, uh, 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 Richard Burr. Of North Carolina. Okay, the, we'll the come Senate, back to that. that Senate the, Senate. Intel, the Senate Intel. We have a headline on that, if you can find it. The, uh, the, the bipartisan uh, committee that's been investigating the nature of the Russian attack on America, cyber, social media, election, all that stuff that uh, Trump more or less denies occurred, uh, is getting lesser attention but ought to get primary attention. Um, simply because they say, listen, th this whole thing is too legit yes. to ignore. It is completely legit. 
it flies in the face of the idea that the Ukrainians are actually acting to intervene in the election on behalf of Hillary Clinton uh, versus, you know, via crowd strike at all, yada, 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 yada. Uh, I'm not sure that they mention that. They just talk about the nature of this, of this particular Russian intervention. So the Senate is showing, to your point, the yeah. Senate is showing a maturity yeah. uh, about itself. And I just wonder, in some ironic way, that the president hasn't blown his own big toe off here, figuratively, right, by this Turkish move, because it's really sick to say this, but I wonder whether Republican senators uh, who stand as the stop to the impeachment process, right, whether they are actually going to find some solace in that terrible decision to rationalize, you know, a move against Trump. I don't know that America's political acumen right now is high enough to recognize that which is occurring right now in northern Syria as a problem when the president guaranteed this week and beyond will be parading around talking about right. how he made a promise to withdraw American soldiers from those places. Those things are simple. You know, International affairs and right. right. So the geo factor is not something that everyday Americans are thinking about when they go to work each day, right? That's, that's too right. bad. That's right. No, but it's it'll understandable. Be, it's un I, I don't know what. So what, what, do we have to have an identified story of a release of three thousand ISIS prisoners or, or, or a breakout of three thousand ISIS prisoners to to cause the kind of ruckus? I mean, my God, but is that? What, I, I don't know. So first, I want to say that I got so impassioned after watching Jim Jordan. And that's because we cannot abide any more duplicity in this country. Politics is politics, but this crass duplicity is another level. I'm given heart by people like Richard Burr in North Carolina, who is saying enough is enough. Now, on the Russian thing. On the Russian thing. And it's going to be even easier to say this, you know, even uh, Lindsey Graham, you know, who has been Trump's greatest supporter is challenging his beloved leader I, he, on this. Uh, Lindsey Graham worked himself into a lather and got himself caught in this web. So what I'm wondering is this. This is my scenario. You know, I'm drawing scenarios oh, there's a scenario. You. When we okay. come back, when we come back, the scenario. I want this in full context. Stay with us. So now more than half of uh, America polled, and, and just about every poll that exists out there, uh, are thumbs up on the impeachment inquiry. Um, you know, keyword inquiry, right? Because we don't have an impeachment vote yet. Um, we really haven't talked about the idea that the White House is pushing back so hard. We had those headlines that we put up early on. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but you had a grand theory. Go ahead, tell me about your grand theory, okay. and then we'll talk about those two quick things. So this is my scenario for what's happening right now. There's no way that Pelosi can stop the impeachment inquiry. Even the public now wants this. We want to get to the roots of what's going on, what's truthful, what are the evidence. Okay, that's step one. Of course, Republican senators are the key to... A, you know, is deciding the impeachment case. But there's no way the party of Trump will vote out the President Trump, right? So there's no way. But Pelosi and the Democrats already know this because we want to see, if we are Democrats, Republicans somehow justifying Trump's behavior. That will appease Trump's base but that will alienate the country as these polls suggest. And so what will happen then in 2020 in the election? Not only will the Democrats keep the House and win the presidency, but they're also going to turn the Senate. That's the long-term plan. And I think responsible Republicans are not only going to stop this reckless president's uh, foreign policy, but they're also going to do their damn best to save their party because otherwise their party is going to hell in a handbasket. What, what is shaving the party? It's, it's, the party uh, has got to acknowledge and, and they and have to vote for impeachment. They have to, just like those Republicans got Nixon to resign, Trump will never resign. But they need to show that the Republican Party is not subservient to one man, 
and they need to show that they are adherence to the rule of law. It's going to be a hard. It's going to be a hard thing to navigate because uh, the president will not be on trial for pulling troops out of Syria. The president will not be on trial for foreign policy decisions. The president will be on trial almost exclusively on this Ukrainian phone call dynamic. Uh, with a little bit of maybe flavor of the Mueller investigation at all. So it'll be very, very hard for them to pull that scenario off. But it, they are not going, to, they might be officially judging him on the Ukrainian question, but they're judging him on the sensibility. But they'll have to explain to their, to their own constituents and their own base you know? that that is a nuance. It'll have to be, you know, I don't know, almost like, it's, uh, it's a weird analogy, but almost what Buddy Cianci, God rest him, was, was, right. was convicted on. That's right. He was not convicted on any predicate counts at all. He was convicted on the overarching responsibility for the conspiracy. That's, that's good. So the, so the Senate comes back and says, well, listen, you know, we don't really buy this whole phone call thing. We don't really believe that he was holding back military aid in lieu of a promised investigation of his political opponent, Joe Biden. We don't really believe that, but you know what? Guy's a whack job, won't stop tweeting, just pulled this stunt in Turkey. That's a mess. We got ISIS running around now. Uh, he's got to go. That's going to be a hard one. That's going to be a hard one. But we'll, we'll see what uh, but, you're... You know, uh, if they what, don't, here, though, you're saying the Democrats are like, ha-ha, gotcha. If they don't, they're, you know, the Republicans are trapped. So I would say this to every responsible Republican out there. Oh, finger pointing at to the cameras going on here. are you going to be responsible, to your constituents today or to history ultimately? And the move for the White House not to cooperate is not going to help the polling data that is already momentum. momentum. And remember, the, the impeachment process is political in a sense, not dirty political, but in the sense of the pulse of the people. And by the way, I don't know where they get off on this. There are no rules in the House for that. that the, the House can conduct their own inquiry at their own pace with their own process. And in fact, the Senate, while it's responsible for a quote trial, can run it the way they want to as well. There is this, 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 this due process rules of the district court that they're trying to imply need to go here. Uh, it's a specious argument. A terribly specious argument. Uh, America's going to have to get a civics lesson on this one. Uh, but there, this is not a, the legalese that they're using is not a legal argument. It's part of the political argument to say, oh, I'm being so poorly treated for me. Trump is good at playing right. the victim. I'm I, surprised. I, I always do this with you. 20 seconds is all I got. What happens next? <laughs> I am perplexed. I don't know. Because everything stands in the hands of a few Republicans about whether they're going to be responsible or whether they're going to cave to Trump's pressure. Stay tuned. I wish it was just a, a TV drama. It's not. Professor, thank you. Thank you. Final word. Tomorrow night we get Twin River side of the Twin River IGT collision. Mark Crisafuli, the BPGM. Actually, he's got a bigger title than that. One of the Big honchos at Twin River will be in here uh, tomorrow night to talk about that. All right. We'll see you on the radio at 3 until 6 on WPRO tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning in. Good night.